Hey everyone, welcome back or welcome if you're new. This is Breathe and Budget and my name is Taryn. We talk about all things finance related on this channel. I talk about how I use the zero-based budget method, cash envelopes, as well as fun savings challenges to meet our financial goals. So if any of that is of interest to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, join our community here, and let's get into today's video. All right, so we are going to do a quick budget update for December 15th paycheck. So this is my budget by paycheck workbook. It is by the budget mom. I have been using this since April of 2020 and it has been a lifesaver for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and write the check date, which would be December 15th. It's going to be my income. And it's going to be 21.33. Okay. So I'm filming this on the 14th. So this will hit as direct deposit this afternoon, like probably, well, not afternoon, but like in the middle of the night, like midnight. So I just want to make sure that I know exactly what bills um, and I base this off of my budget calendar. So I create my budget calendar, which I mark my paydays. And then I also will highlight the bills that will be covered by each paycheck. So for this one, the 15th, I know that half of my mortgage is going to come out. I put half with my first check and I put the other half with this check. Um, so I'm just going to write the 15th here and that'll be 440. I started to write a four. <laughs> Whoops. So what I do is I take the money and I put it into a savings account as just kind of a holding until the next month because I'm one month ahead in mortgage. So December's mortgage was already paid and I paid that back with like November. And then the money I'm putting away in December will be for January mortgage. So I just go ahead and make a transfer in my checking account to a savings account that I just kind of use as a, a holding account until I need to bring it back in. So then I also have half of the car Again, same thing with this one. I just go ahead and move it over just as holding for the next month because I am one month ahead. Actually, I think I'm technically, like I already, the payment that I made this month went towards January. So I don't know, am I a month ahead, two months ahead? I never know. I just know it's always paid on time. Um, so, and I split it up. So these are the two that I split. So um, my check on the 30th and then my check on the 15th, I take these two amounts, just put it in half and I actually do a little bit more. So hopefully, you know, and I have, well, I know I have it set up to go towards like principal. So that does reduce our interest over time. But I have those two split up between the month and I have them just going into a savings account as a holder until the next month when I will reintroduce it back into the budget. Then on the 16th for $2, I have Google, fold, fold, uh, Google Photos. So I pay $2 a month, it's $1.99, to basically back up all of my pictures. And I do that because there was a period of time where I thought I lost over 10,000 pictures of when Sky was first born, including pictures you know, of her delivery and everything and it was devastating. I had an external hard drive that wound up like just, it just stopped working and we can't access it. So I don't, you know, I really, I panicked and then I was able to find them. So I paid to have like double the backup. I'll pay $2 a month to make sure that all of those memories are safe and secure. So I don't just have it in one place. I have like the external hard drive by SanDisk, obviously the iCloud, but we all know if you delete something from your phone, it deletes it from the cloud. It's not a holding place the way that like Google Photos is. Um, so yeah, I kind of have it in various places just for that fear of not wanting to lose it. Um, I do, however, pay for iCloud storage. So I do like the one terabyte 
but that is shared uh, with everyone. So my entire family, we share that storage and I've just found that that's useful for us. And I can foot the $10 a month to make sure that we all have the storage we need. So for the water in the trash bill, I'm just gonna do $20 and that will be pulled in cash. Since our water is um, every other month, our trash is every three months, I don't necessarily need this to sit in the account right now. So I do pull cash for this and I put it into our cash envelope, our high priority binder. And then when it is time and the bill is generated, I'll have the money to cover that. We also have Six Flags. It is a local theme park that we have here in California. And then I did go ahead and purchase a little bit more for me for clothing uh, from Victoria's Secrets um, during their like holiday sale. So that was $64. So instead of like cash pulling and putting that into my clothing envelope, I'm literally just going to pay the bill because I have a Victoria's Secrets credit card. I think it's like MasterCard or whatever. And it's not even due yet. Like the bill hasn't generated, so there's no date, but I'm just going to pay it now. There's really no point in me waiting. So let me grab my calculator. Let me just add this up. Okay, that equals 910. So what I do now is I will take the money that we're starting with, the 2,133, and I will minus that 910. So that leaves me with 1,223 left over. You can see that there on the bottom of the screen. So I roll that amount over here. And then I need to list some of my variable expenses. Right. So some of my variable expenses are like groceries, gasoline, our personal spending, like dining out and pets. Those are the ones I'm gonna focus on for this paycheck. So for both our groceries and gasoline, we are cashless. So if you're new to my channel or even new to like this type of budgeting, basically what I mean is I don't pull cash and use a cash envelope like one of these, like something like this, where you would hold your cash with you like on your person. I don't do that for groceries or gasoline. I have a different checking account for these two categories combined and only for these two. And then my husband and I each have a card to access that account. That way, both of us can put gas in the car or pick up any groceries for the house as needed. And we don't have to worry about like him not having the cash with him that day. So these two being cashless works for us. But I felt it was important to separate that money from our regular checking account. Yes, I could have kept it in our checking account and maybe use like a tracker, you know, to track the spending. But just to be on the safe side, I've chosen to have it completely separate. So groceries is going to get $250 and gas is going to get $200. Now, for other categories that are considered variable expenses that I do pull cash for will be our personal spending, which my husband's going to get 100 and I'm going to get 50. He gets, um, I wrote a zero and I meant to write a five. He gets $400 for the month and I opt for $200. The reason I did that, uh, he felt that he needed a little bit more I understood his concern. I just felt like because I usually carry the majority of the cash uh, envelopes with me, whether it's at home here or like if I pull some and take it with me on the go and I have the kids the majority of the time, I can always pull from the kids envelope, the dining out envelope. So even though I put 200 to my personal spending, should I need to pull from somewhere else? I can. I also pull for my nails. So I feel like it's fair. So I know some people would be like, he gets 400, you get 200. Well, he also doesn't go get his nails done. Although it would be nice if he went and got a pedicure with me one day, but I just don't see him doing that. Next one is going to be dining out. We're going to go ahead and put 100 there. And then for pets, I'm going to throw an extra 30. We are, January will be completely different for my pets. I have already started to create the envelopes for it. For example, this one. 
These are my matte envelopes that I make. These are available in my shop. Uh, by the time this video posts, my shop will be closed for the holidays though, but it will reopen. I don't know, probably like the day after Christmas. I don't know that I'll wait till the new year. I might open up sooner than that. But I'm gonna start like specifying categories for my pets. Right now I just like throw money at it, but I want to actually make sure I'm putting some like flea prevention, food, um, atlases, chew toys, things like that. So I'm already starting to create that. So we will see how that goes. So this is just from my essentials categories. I want to jump into a few other categories. Let me just see if I have enough room to just put them down here because I want to finalize this. I like to try to separate. This is my essentials and then my sinking funds. I have enough room. Let's go ahead and add up this section. Okay, so that's 730. So I'm going to take that 1223 and minus the 730. That leaves me with 493, okay? So I'm gonna bring that 493 down here, and this is what I have to work with for the next section, which will be my sinking funds. Make a little bit more room so that you guys can see this bottom part. So this will be my sinking funds. So the ones that I'm gonna focus on for this paycheck, um, a lot of my home, like my household ones. So we're gonna do home renovations, we're going to do pest control, uh, housekeeping, and then I want to move into some of our like lower priority, family fun. Well, wellness is not low priority, but I want to make sure I add to that. I just remembered I had to replenish from like taking out for yoga. Then we have vacation and haircuts. So I'm gonna focus on these categories. So for the home ones, I'm gonna do $100 each. I want to really get these bulked up, especially the pest control. Like come January, I wanna be able to start that annual like subscription with them. Housekeeping, I really don't even know whether we'll ever do it. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know that I will do that, but should I you know, want to and decide, okay, that would be nice. I will and I will have the money. If not, I can take that and I can put that towards maybe home renovations or, you know, I mean, even like putting in pest control for the next following year, I could do that. Family fund, we're going to go ahead and throw 60 there. Wellness, I want to put 50. And then vacations, I'm going to put 50. I want to do 100 for the month for both of these, but I'm just going to do 50 for this paycheck and then add it for the next one. And then haircuts, I'm going to do 33 because we have that three from the 493. And I would use a zero base budget, meaning I need to give every dollar a job. So those are going to be the amounts for this section. Let's add that up. Okay, so that does equal the 493 that we had left. So I'm just going to put that down here, which means we have zero dollars left to allocate. So that is what a zero based budget is, is taking the money that you have to use. If you get paid once a month, this is, and this is your monthly or, you know, your weekly or biweekly checks, whatever that is that you're working with, make sure all of your fixed expenses are paid first. Whatever you have left over will go to fund any of your variable expenses, but also necessities. We need groceries, we need gasoline. My pets need to be cared for. If I needed to do a bare bones budget, yes, we would forego spending and dining out, but we are not there, so we are going to add to that. Then you wanna move into your long-term or short-term, like if you need to get something going right away, but your sinking funds. So things that you want to save for. So those could be things like holidays, birthdays, projects around the house, um, insurance, car registration, things that you don't necessarily pay for every single month, but they do roll around and you want to be financially prepared for when they, you know, become due. If it's a bill or you want to, for example, home renovations, we want new flooring. So I will eventually get to the amount that we need and I will be able to put new flooring. 
Is it something I need right now? No, we don't have like water damage. This is not something that needs to be done right now. It's a high priority for me, but it's a long term. So there could be like high priority, short term, long term. There could be low priority, long term. And even like low priority, short term, like my housekeeping, I don't want to be saving for this forever. I want to get to where I want it to be, but it's low priority. If I don't, I don't. If I wind up not using it for that, so be it. So that is what a zero-based budget is. Thank you for hanging out with me. And I am going to go ahead and get this cash pulled from the bank so that I can do my cash stuffing. So I will see you in that video. Take care. Bye.